I make a lot of virtual desktop videos. I mean, like, a lot of videos. And I keep getting asked the same question repeatedly. Can I use a link cable with virtual desktop? My answer up till now has always been a resounding no. The app is a very clever solution for playing all your PC VR games wirelessly on your MetaQuest or Pico headset. Why would you want to tether yourself with a cable? Well, <laughs> it turns out you can use virtual desktop wired with this crazy solution from my very good friend Tassos, a slightly unhinged Greek genius, though he may have been at the time. So here we go. Let's get straight into it then. And remember, we're born to respawn. The equipment and apps. You will need four things to get this working. A MetaQuest or Pico headset, preferably with a battery head strap. The virtual desktop app, a USB-C gigabit ethernet adapter with 60 watt charging port. And finally, a longish ethernet cable. I tested this using my MetaQuest 3 and KKCO BVR Q3 Pro battery head strap, but it will work equally well on a Quest 3S, Quest 2, Quest Pro, Pico 4 and 4 Ultra. Make sure you have the virtual desktop app installed on your headset and the streamer app installed on your PC. This isn't a virtual desktop setup video, however. So if you want to know how to get it working and optimized for your PC, go check out this video here then come back once you're done. I will quickly flash up all my settings though, so if you want to copy them, pause the video now. With Virtual Desktop installed, purchase one of these from Amazon or your preferred online retailer. I got this generic USB-C gigabit ethernet adapter with a 60 watt charging capacity via an additional USB-C port on the front. Finally, you'll need a longish ethernet cable. I had this loose Cat6 cable lying about from when I wired up the Mac cave, plus the RJ45 connectors and crimping tool. So, because I'm a skinflint, I made my own. And I'll quickly show you how at the end of the video, so make sure to stay tuned right to the end for that. The setup. This bit is dead easy. Plug the ethernet and charging cable from your battery into the rear ports. Attach the ethernet adapter to your headset using whatever it is to hand, Velcro, tape, straps, or whatever. I have these very useful cable clips from Kiwi Design that were just hanging around. So they clamped the ethernet and battery cable nice and tight to my side strap. The USB-C cable to headset port was a bit long, so I secured that using the overhead Velcro strap here. Looks a bit untidy, but it kept all the cables out of my way so they didn't get snagged. I also have this Kiwi Design cable management system pre-installed for my PSVR 2. So, it came in handy for keeping everything suspended and tidy. Turn on your headset, go to settings and switch off Wi-Fi. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but trust me. Now, start virtual desktop and on the computer tab, you will see this. But don't worry, check your games library is present, then click the game you want to play and virtual desktop will launch it. That's it. How easy was that? Half-Life Alex. All footage was recorded in headset so that the virtual desktop performance overlay was always visible and I'll be using the Steam VR runtime. Now, let's move on. Half-Life Alex has been a benchmark game since it released five years ago and to be honest, I don't need much of an excuse to jump back into Alex's shoes. The game is so good. So, we're off to quarantine zone. Wish me luck. All graphic settings are on ultra as shown and you can see by the overlay latency as low as 32 milliseconds and never gets higher than 42 even during explosions in combat that's phenomenal don't you think le mans ultimate i've become a bit obsessed with this sim racing game since i did this video about ultimate graphic settings and getting the game to run in ultra across the board so we're hopping into my favourite McLaren GT3 at my favourite circuit, Spa-Francorchamps, for a few laps around the Belgian forest. But this time I'll be using VDXR, which is Virtual Desktop's own XR runtime. 
Again, all graphics settings are on the default ultra. Latency as low as 26 milliseconds and never goes higher than 37, even through the grandstand section, which is pretty mind boggling, don't you think? The conclusion. Why not just use a link cable? Well, playing with virtual desktop wired is a bit of a revelation. All the advantages of being tethered, but also all the advantages of virtual desktop's extensive settings tweaks. It's a win-win situation. Basically running the app with adaptive quantization, two-pass encoding, VDXR runtime and FOV tangent sliders is like getting a free graphics card upgrade. I run an NVIDIA RTX 4080 that now performs like an RTX 5080. These two combined really push your VR experience to the absolute maximum. I understand that having a cable attached to your headset kind of negates the whole idea of virtual desktop, but before you dismiss this approach, just try it out, especially if you're into sim racing, space sims or flight sims and are playing seated and use standalone headset like the offerings from Meta and Pico. Cat6 Ethernet cable. Right, before I sign off, I'm going to quickly show you how I made my own Ethernet cable and you will need these four things. A spool of Ethernet cable. This one is Cat6, so up to 1 gigabit per second at 250 megahertz. RJ45 connectors, an RJ45 crimping tool, and a cable wiring guide. Strip the outer coating using the crimping tool, take quite a lot off as it makes it easier to manipulate the wires. Cut the plastic inner off using the cable guide, make sure the RJ45 connector is the right way round. Then gently insert your wires in the correct order. This can be quite fiddly so make sure your area is very well lit. Once that is done, pull the wires all the way through till the plastic outer passes this point in the RJ45 connector. Place the connector into the crimping tool, then crimp. It will secure the cable outer and trim all the excess wire in one go. Pretty neat, eh? Now, repeat the process for the other end and voila, a brand spanking new Cat6 Ethernet cable that you have the satisfaction of making yourself. If it works. <laughs> if it doesn't, just buy one from Amazon and tell everyone that you made it. Well, that's it for today. And as always, what do you think? Are you going to try virtual desktop wired using this method? Are you sticking to your wired solution or are you a display port forever PC master race type? You know the drill. Get involved and comment down below. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. If you love this content, please subscribe and join my channel membership like these lovely people did. You get custom badges, emojis, and early access to most of my content. If you want to watch more content from me, please click here or here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.